Hey guys, this is Tyler here, and it is January here in Estonia. I'm going to discuss with everyone here, for all guys or gals who own a startup or who would like to do like a startup, especially within technology, what some things they should consider and, and why or why not it may, it may be suitable with the current environment that we're in. And anyone here who doesn't know this, but startup, technology-based startups are one of the quickest way you can become very wealthy and this is a fact it, it's um if you look at the list of self-made wealthy entrepreneurs and if you look at the age what you typically see is the guys that do it say before the age of 40 are in some realm of technology this is almost consistently the case now of course there's exceptions there are guys obviously in other industries but the lion's share is within technology this is typically when you'll be able to become wealth the quickest and it's the biggest amount of exponential growth accessible typically at the same time though you have to realize um factors that you're continuing with especially in western countries let me give you some background here on myself my brother and i actually the people have inquired to me why i came to estonia and I didn't come to Estonia because I like because I was interested in the blondes here. That because there's certainly a lot of them in this country. It was actually be, it was work based. It was because of a startup that I was co-running with my brother. And what we had was a technology based startup brand. It, it was a wearable wearable technology smartwatch that we produced. And we were we had launched our first line. The second line we were about to to launch but unfortunately we encountered some huge obstacles which in turn prevented us from producing this hardware on a massive scale but we were very very close we, we had launched the first line the second one was going to be like a would have been a multi-million dollar profit to start so we would have already had a multi-million dollar valuation just at that point we were well on to our way to huge success and we were actually going to go further to other areas not just within like wearable smartwatches we we're going to actually go into other kinds of technology software and we're actually um looking at doing like a crypto investment wing uh like an institutional crypto investment wing of the the brand eventually that was kind of all part of the works but unfortunately we were stalled because what occurred is that we had launched a uh, crowdfunding campaign through Kickstarter and the first time we were shut down there were discrepancies there and we had already reached our goal within like a couple weeks we when we were shut down our goal was initial goal was 50,000 we were already at like $75,000 of, of fundraising we had estimated we would have received somewhere around 300 grand in crowdfunding and then we launched the second time we went through all the protocol they approved and then we had met our goal within the first week i think we were like maybe fifty-five thousand. and then we were shut down again by kickstarter even though we had had plenty of correspondence we had everything had been cleared they still shut us down and a lot of it actually went back to the problem that there were a lot of trolls at that time on kickstarter and they would essentially many of these guys um, would try to get campaign shut down and, and they would say a lot of negative things they would send messages into kickstarter it was really terrible i think it's maybe improved a bit since then but it, it was a huge mess honestly at, at that time we didn't my brother and i didn't have the funds on our own to to self-fund it eventually we had to shut down the the brand the smartwatch brand and th this was I, I, on paper i mean it was a success now unfortunately because we don't we couldn't receive these funds we couldn't do any large-scale manufacturing of the the smartwatch we needed at least a few hundred thousand dollars to um get large-scale orders going it, it was just we, we couldn't have done it on a scale big enough and made a solid enough profit to do it really small we we needed to start out big and that's just how it was now there were a lot of things so i learned along the way and I, I have shared a few of these experiences in previous videos but one of the first things like i noticed was that being within technology it's it, it scales very fast and there's a lot of money out there whether 
it's from customers, it's investors. There's a lot of demand in the market and there's a lot of niche areas of the market. And this is important to understand. The next thing was that if you can't self-fund something, it's often going to be a problem from the beginning. If you have to rely on investors of some sort, it's it's very challenging and it's going to present a lot of obstacles. And, and you have to be aware that without investors, you're going to need to bring your own capital to the table. And, and also remember, a lot of these companies or businesses that do receive investment, those guys themselves bring money to the table. I mean, we look at Elon Musk. I think when he first started Tesla, he himself was bringing, don't quote me on this, 20 or 40 million he, he put on, down on the table to show investors. If investors see that you're committed in that way, they are also gonna be convinced of this area and more likely to be willing to invest. If you don't bring any funds to the table, you don't have any real skin in the game usually. If you have a really high amount of expertise, you have massive programming skills, you have a, a huge understanding of the, like if it's a complex area that you're doing, if it's like say within data science or AI, machine learning, and you bring some huge expertise, that may be enough. But if, if you don't have those kind of skills, if say you're just like a salesman, which truthfully speaking, many many co-founders of these startups are simply salesmen. It's it's hard to convince investors. They, they, there's not really any real skin in the game. And it's it's gonna be really hard to go somewhere. So you, you have to think about those areas. Now, the next thing to remember is that it's very political often, it, or it gets political within a startup, especially when you start getting more notoriety. And whether it's, you as a founder or co-founder, it's how the company operates, it's what they endorse, many areas. If you get negative coverage of something, or there's someone or something somewhere that doesn't like what you're about or, or something you're doing, you can be shut down very quickly, or um, you, can, you can really um, face a, a huge threat. and. Um, the profits could really drop or, or something negative could happen if, if you aren't aware of these problem points and, and you don't know how to correctly respond. Keep in mind that the Silicon Valley and a lot of the Western based technology and investors, software companies, they support the status quo of the US and the Western ideals, the liberal ideals, most of the time and if for this reason firstly it's best to just stay apolitical as much as possible don't even get involved like what coinbase did we they issued a statement we're not getting political we're not having anything to do with this several months ago that was a good approach they took because once you take a stance there's going to be more turmoil immediately and that's just what it is uh, there's been a lot of, we saw it happen with Discord, with Twitch. Twitch obviously was recently acquired the, for by Salesforce. We saw it happen with Parler. They obviously um, got a lot of press coverage recently. I, I think they'll be back live if, if they haven't shut down. I haven't checked that story out if they're not still in the App Store. But th these are all areas that people have to think about. Keep in mind though, like there are cases where that negative publicity can work to your benefit. I think in the case with Parler, if they properly capitalize on that opportunity, especially with President Trump being taken down, that's a great opportunity to really scale, to grow and grow and grow. And, and there are times where that negative publicity can actually be to your benefit. And, and that there's certainly those situations there. Now also remember that if you're a company like in the case with Parler, you have, or Parler, Gab, if you don't have your own servers, you're at the mercy of big tech and whatever the political winds of the West are, you're gonna be at their whim. So starting from the very basis of how you're built you have to think of like your servers, the host, everything from the ground up, you're building. This is what ultimately when you look at like software hardware, it's essentially a virtual environment of building. It's just like building a home and you have to start from the ground up and build your own real estate. 
that's how you think about this. Poetry now, it's very accessible. There, there's a lot of um, very quick ways that you, you, you can um, essentially have all your own hardware, your own tech, your own software. And, and w- once you own the, your own real estate, you don't have to contend as much with these bigger forces. Even if you're having to rely on a platform like GoDaddy, they could still shut you down. In the host of different companies will start doing this even if you're not operating on say the real estate you're not if say you're not in the google store or something the host or the servers they can still shut you down and i think amazon their web services they're they're going to start shutting companies down or businesses or startups that don't conform to their ideals and and so don't think if if you're doing something where it may bother people it, it could be a bit there could be a little turmoil there's always secondary options out there and you can certainly build on an alternative platform or server or host where you don't have to be as concerned about being shut down just remember how do you think all the russian the big brands in russia the big brands in china anyone who's russian here knows like ozone or Yindex, these are brands that most people in the West, they don't recognize. If you ask someone about Ozone, who's Yindex, most Russians are gonna know who these these big brands are. And how do you think they build? They they have to build on their own real estate. You think a Western server is gonna host these brands? Of course not. Maybe they would. They'd probably, the company still would probably get a lot of threats, they wouldn't be able to operate long. China, it's the same thing. They, they have to rely on their own real estate and and build that way and and that's how it works so fortunately we're in an age you have options out there and you you don't have to just be at the whims of these bigger companies now another thing you have to think about this is more from the sales and the marketing angle what catches this is like advertisement is there something like that really is edgy that catches people's attention that sets you apart that really brings people onto the platform as i i will go back here example i gave with trump and what happened with twitter and with parlor these are huge opportunities like for gab and for like bit shoot or other platforms to get them on board and and guy big big guys like this can really help grow these platforms, bring a lot of media attention, and not all negative attention is bad attention. Any media, even negative media, can be very impactful, and it can actually be more impactful than not having any coverage. And it it doesn't have to just do with like negative media, it can be something about what you're doing. there, There has to be something that really catches people's attention. It may be through how you present in videos and how there, there's something unique there that convinces people to check it out. Because often what you're going to find is that people are going to talk, you're better off being spoken about, even if it's negative, than not getting any type of notoriety at all, not getting any attention. That It's always going to be better, even if it's negative, get some attention. The, this is going to be more to help build the brand and, and business. The next thing, if you're not an engineer, you don't have data science, machine learning, software building skills, you're gonna need very bright people in these areas. It's best if you're a founder, co-founder, if you have these kind of areas of expertise. and. I will say, I, I think it's best to try to find a company independent if you can without any co-founders, just independent. But there are times where you're going to need a co-founder or a couple co-founders. Only bring on people that you absolutely need. Don't bring on a bunch of people that don't serve a purpose. If you can bring on the people that, in, in the bread and butter are the engineers, typically, or the scientists. They're the people that bring the hard skills to the table and these are the builders and people that have those specialty skills that make the business or the company operate if you don't have these guys the software the hardware can't be built it's best if you have those skills if if you can do it yourself this is the best situation many many people can't if you can 
learn them at a learn this at a young age if you're still at that age i would highly urge you to learn these skills on your own and and then you can apply these skills on your own and you don't you're not going to be as much at the whims of someone else and they're not going to be controlling as much of what you can do and, and what the outcomes of the future of the business is next thing is don't be afraid to to focus your your efforts concentration on other areas of the world apart from like silicon valley apart from western countries other areas of the globe are going to be emerging very rapidly as i said before you have to deal with the political wimps in those countries do you want to deal with that we saw what happened with plaid the company that was bought out by visa just several months ago for like five billion dollars the justice department or whoever it was the feds just basically declared an antitrust problem and they blocked the acquisition from occurring so plaid is now back on their own and this is the kind of thing you have to deal with now from the states and now imagine you have a like democrat government senate congress and president that you have to deal with these types of things are probably going to become more common do you want to contend with that i I don't think it's very pleasant. There's countries like Belarus and Russia is an option, but especially like Belarus, you're not going to deal with that kind of nonsense in countries like that. Yes, we, you, you, you may. So the point being is that you have to deal with a lot of these kind of like political factors you have to be more concerned about now. I'm not saying that it's a, it means a no go in these countries. You just have to think about the area that you're in. And, and as I stated before, if you're in an area like what Parler does, this is a problem because you're obviously going to have to, there's going to be politics that are imminently involved. Unfortunately, we're in a day and age where it almost seems like a global web of, it. Th this is kind of my picture sometimes, is that um, anything from like the US, from the West, they kind of had their web of approved companies, of approved brands, and new emergers, if you're not like kind of in their like club or you're not going to intend to follow their protocol, you can be shut down or you just won't make it. And this is just kind of how things have started to become and it could certainly worsen. I'm not going to say in all countries this is the case. There are some very like more conspiratorial people and they say it's like this global, worldwide. I don't know if I totally believe that. I think there's certainly um, ver various areas in other countries where y you can certainly be very independent, not be really tied politically and still do very well. So I actually know, for example, a girl that I dated when I was a bit younger, it was a few years ago, she was Russian, she was from an eastern city and um, further into Russia, close I think to the Oral Mountains and her dad owned like a, a decent sized logistics company. I mean he was legitimately wealthy by uh, both Russian and Western standards. I mean he, he was worth somewhere well into the millions and he was certainly against like the russian government at that time and her this gal she she um very much emphasized how he didn't like playing ball with with the government at that point in time if anyone knows anything about how it works in these places if you're a guy and you're a pretty decent sized entrepreneur you you have an operation that's at least into the millions you may have to start bribing officials or paying them something. This is, it might sound bad on the surface, but you have to think of these bribes as kind of like a tax, honestly, that's really what it is. A lot of these these guys, they're not paying a lot of taxes in these countries, like we would see in Western countries or it's not formalized. So you have to bribe officials and, and this is just how it works in some of these countries. And he, he had problems with this and among other things, he didn't like how the, how the government was operating in Russia, but he he was, uh, his business and, um, or his company still operated and they were never shut down or anything. But I mean, this kind of illustrates that, yes, there are people who think that if, if you don't necessarily meet all the protocol in a country that you'll be shut down, maybe if you're really big, but not necessarily. I think we saw that case with the famous hydrogen cell brand Nikola and I think there's been other um, pretty 
well-known cases where the you could say they weren't operating in accordance with the what the regime wanted and, and it didn't make a big deal but yes if you're in certain areas this could be an issue like if you're in television or media or something but you got got to be aware of this and another important facet too is focus on on building and on producing profit whether, whether it's a product service focus on making profit often people just focus on gaining a certain investor or it's more the ideal rather than actually finding customers finding clients that would be interested and this is i think a lot more impactful because there's guys that start e-commerce brands businesses and they eventually become major companies that was the situation with shopify this guy started as like just like a business and commerce store and eventually he became a company and and i actually have a friend he's from chile and he operates a uh, e-commerce brand and he, he's grown very big in the past year the evaluation of his business now is it's pretty high on us at currently and it's been like a year and a half now that he's been operating a guy though who's doing an e-commerce store or business that's making say a few million in profit is probably more likely to succeed than a guy who has a quote-unquote startup that has no profit especially who doesn't have a mvp minimal viable product there's nothing there more likely the guy with the e-commerce brand making serious profit is actually going to be long term way more successful it, there's and there's many avenues this person could take that e-commerce brand and just realize that if anyone here wants to get going though go for it it's one of the best ways if you really want to make a fortune and you have the skills and ambition go for it there's no better time to be in an online age and just know your customer know your product or service and simply get out there and and, and try whatever it is so give me your feedback and thank you